What's up guys? Today we're talking boxing weight cuts versus MMA weight cuts. These two are basically on the opposite spectrum of how much weight you need to cut. And I want to explain to you guys why it's more important to make that massive cut for MMA. Whereas in boxing, you don't see a lot of the fighters whose cheeks look sunken in and they look super dehydrated when they step on the scales. We'll also talk about the other fight sports in between. You know, we'll talk about boxing and kickboxing, Muay Thai, and then MMA, and how much weight you should be expecting to cut for each of these different disciplines, because it is very dramatic how much of of a change is necessary in your body weight to be competitive at these weight classes. So weight cuts guys, that is the topic of conversation today. All right guys, the reason we're making this video today, we're talking about this weight cutting subject, is somebody posted why does it seem like weight cuts are so hard for UFC fighters and other disciplines, but not for boxers? The comment here references Khabib, Darren Till, TJ Dillshaw, I'll throw Conor McGregor in there too when he used to compete at 145, saying why do they look so terrible? Why don't they just move up and wait? That is a very, very good question. Now guys, before we go any further, if you're gonna join the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Now, I want to talk in particular about the body mechanics of all the different sports. Now, when we talk about boxing, I want you to just think about what you're striking with. It's generally hands. Whenever you see boxers clench up, they're instructed right away to release. There's very few times you see anybody getting thrown around. Therefore, size isn't that much of a factor because punching power is not always dictated by how much you weigh or how much you overweigh your opponent. It can also be all the mechanics of the body, getting that maximum power, it can also be the speed at which you can throw your shot. But as we move into, let's say, kickboxing or Muay Thai, then we start engaging into the clinch. And all of a sudden, yes, power does matter. There's lots of timing and lots of technique. That's more important than the power, but power does matter in this situation. If you're clenching with somebody who is as good as you, but they weigh 10, 15 pounds more, that's gonna become an issue. And even more so in MMA, because in particular, so many of these guys are so good at wrestling, have been wrestling for the whole career, and they are so good at getting on top of their opponent and almost being like a wet blanket, just smothering them, just letting that extra weight drop. And if you're the guy on the bottom and you're trying to fight somebody off you, or you're against the cage and somebody's leaning against you, it might not seem like much, but Maybe that extra 15, 20 pounds that somebody can rehydrate, that makes a world, a world of difference. And I didn't really recognize this until I fought Robin Van Roosmalen. He had been the champion at 155. I was at 145 as the champion. He moved down and I went, you know what? I don't think that's really gonna help him. He's going to cut weight. He's gonna be tired. He's gonna be fatigued. His power, his extra strength won't amount for that much more because he's gonna deplete himself getting down to that weight class, that extra 10 pounds. And then he made weight. He rehydrated so high. He went from 100, it wasn't even 45 pounds. It was 143. And I heard that he went up to about 172, just eating so much food. And myself, I went from about 140 to 149 and when I was in the ring it wasn't so much okay yes he hit harder but it was the fact that my shots were not hurting him not in the way they normally did against other people and now you imagine you take that that's just kickboxing imagine if that's MMA imagine if you have somebody like Khabib on top of you and instead of them being the same weight as you and you're trying to deal with getting them off all of a sudden you have somebody like Khabib who cuts to 155 and walking around outside a camp, I've heard rumors that he goes up to at least 190. So it's not unrealistic that he could go from 155 pounds on weigh-in day and the next day be back to 170 or 175. That's no question. He can 100% do that. Might even be more. So let's talk in particular about what most disciplines or what fighters from most disciplines cut. And let's start with boxing. From what I've seen, from what I've been aware of throughout my career, talking to people, we're gonna give 145 because that's my weight class. We're gonna use this for all the different disciplines. We're gonna talk about 145 pounds. Now I know that's not even a boxing weight class. I believe it's 147, but in general, if somebody in boxing is cutting to 145 pounds, it is my understanding that some of them are just cutting down about 10 pounds from 155. Some of them not even that much. It's very rare where you get fighters making the massive weight cut. Now, why is this different? Well, we already talked about the fact that the size does not really account for that much. But what a lot of people I don't think consider is the big long fight these guys have ahead of them and how much more a weight cut can hurt them because if you're fighting potentially 36 minutes, you're doing th 12 three minute rounds. You have to imagine that if the day before you went, let's say from 165 pounds down to 145, and you can only get back to let's say 155 pounds, that throughout the duration of that fight, it is gonna hurt you more 
more and more. And then for a lot of these guys too, they're not used to it. They did a lot of their amateur career fighting very close to what they compete at because it's same day weigh-ins. Now, if we move into kickboxing or Muay Thai, for myself, throughout my whole career at 145 in my amateur stages, I just really walked at what I fought at. And now I still compete at the same weight. The only difference is I've got my walk around weight from about you know 147, where I've cut very, very little before, up to more like 155. But the interest in moving up in weight for me, the interest in putting on another 10 pounds to make the cut so I have a little bit more strength, it's never been a priority of mine, mostly because in my fights, except for one, the one that I already referenced, I've never felt undersized, I've never felt like I'm getting squished in kickboxing by anybody or they hit substantially harder where I need that extra weight to scare them. But when we start talking about MMA, and I've had experience in this, when I have somebody pushing me against the cage and they have a little bit of extra weight against me, you're going, holy smokes, it's taking that extra massive effort to get this extra 10, 15 pounds off me that I'm not used to. And then we imagine somebody, and I'm, this, is, this is not an exaggeration, I know there are 145 pound guys in the MMA divisions who normally, outside of camp, walk at 180, 185. And you might be going, holy smokes, that's, that's impossible. There's no way anybody could do that. But let me break it down for you here, how they would go about doing this. So at 180, 185 pounds, they're gonna be you know, not worrying about their diet. They're gonna be eating lots of food. They're gonna be doing weightlifting. And that's where they'll be outside of camp. Let's say they start an eight week training camp. Right away, they're gonna start dieting and they're gonna try and get their weight down to about 170 pounds. Now the benefit is they still have some muscle left over from that 180 pounds. Their body is used to lifting really heavy weights. So when they get down to 170, it's not like they're losing that strength very quickly. Now, when they're down at about 170 pounds through most of their training camp, I'd say about three weeks out, they're now able to go, okay, I'm gonna cut back maybe on my carbs and I'm gonna drop myself down to like 165 pounds or even 160. They just, they get rid of five or 10 pounds. Now they're within striking distance, you know, 15 pounds away from making that weight. All they need to do for about three or four days before the fight is really stop most of their food intake, increase the water, and right away there in three or four days, they can lose seven pounds. They have seven pounds left, they can cut that through the water loading process and then getting rid of it in the sauna. And then the crazy thing is once they make 145 pounds, they can get back to 150 like that, like just within a matter of an hour. And then by the time they get back, let's say to the end of that night, they can be up at 160 and potentially even by the next day, 165 or 170 pounds. And if you don't do this process in MMA, you are gonna be the fighter when you get in there who is fighting somebody who might have five percent more power than you, 10% more. I'm not sure the exact number, but I know when you're talking about skill levels and you're talking about tiny little differences, we're talking about the best in the world. Extra size makes a difference. Early in my career, it didn't matter if I fought somebody, if I even if I moved up in weight. You know, there's a point where I fought at 135 and then I moved up to 140 pounds. And at that point when I was doing that, I was stepping in with my jeans on, still weighing in at 139. Potentially against guys who were cutting, made no difference. My skill level was high enough. But now you're talking about even playing field, everybody's very, very high level. The extra weight makes that much more of a difference but that's only because there's more body weight behind it. With the wrestling, the clenching, the jujitsu, pushing people up against the cage, that all becomes a factor. You are strictly a striker, a striker like maybe Israel Adesanya, who's generally able to keep people off him, his striking, and I'd say the fact that he's not a massive guy. He doesn't cut from, let's say, like 210 down to 185, but he's able to do that because his striking is so fantastic. He's not exchanging in these points where the bodies are colliding, and his undersized frame is taken advantage of. Except we saw it recently when he moved up to 205, and he lost that fight against the champion there because he got taken down, and then all of a sudden, yes, size makes a massive difference. You're not able to get up the way you normally would be and get back to striking. You get smothered there. So when you see these MMA fighters, making the massive weight cut and you see their, their cheeks sunk in and you see them looking depleted or you hear about them falling over. They're trying to give themselves every possible advantage to deal with that size you need for the wrestling, for the cage work. Whereas a boxer is not worried about that. A boxer is just thinking, okay, I'm striking. If the guy's a little bigger, that's fine. I can move and hit him back. I can move and roll. I can take shots off the guard and it's not gonna affect me the same way as somebody coming and shooting for a takedown or keeping me on the ground. And just because of that idea, I think generally you don't see too many boxers who are worried about having that massive size advantage. There's a few out there who do a big cut, but for the most part, you won't see them looking like they're about to faint on the scale. So the question now becomes, guys, how much weight 
should you be cutting if you want to compete in these different disciplines? Well, I would say if you're a 145 pound fighter or competing at 145 and you're a boxer, you don't need to really worry about walking around more than 150, 155. You could do 160 if you wanted. If you are a kickboxer or a Muay Thai fighter and you want to fight at 145, it's probably a good idea to walk somewhere between 155 and 165. But if you are an MMA fighter, and I'm learning this very quickly because I'm trying to figure out what discipline I want to do. I know that me walking at 155 pounds and cutting down to 145 is far too small. I need to be thinking like I need to get my weight up to at least walking around 170. That is a minimum. So if you're serious about MMA, you should start contemplating the weight cut that you want to do. I know I can't move down to 135. I'm just, I'm not willing to do it. I'm not willing to put my health at risk. So I need to get my body weight up to get stronger in that sense. Now, for me, is it worth it at this point? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting close to the end of my career. Am I that worried about getting my body to this point where it's super strong so I can deplete it? I'm not sure. That's why there's still this process of me figuring out, do I want to kickbox? Do I want to do MMA and worry about this whole massive weight cut situation, which is very important. So anyway, guys, this is just my take on boxing weight cuts versus MMA weight cuts. The difference between the two, what you guys should be thinking if you're planning on competing and hopefully helping fans out there understand just why when we see people step on the scales, they look so terrible. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like. If you haven't already, get subscribed. Train hard guys, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.